I tell you what, he loves us beyond measure. Just think about it. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's right. Amen, brother. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Well, if you will, turn your uh, Bibles to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Well, I can do that now. All right. Let's have a word of prayer, please, before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for what you've done for us, dear God. And I thank you, dear God, for just being here tonight and just watching over us and keeping us safe. I thank you, dear God, for bringing us here to our next appointed time. Each and every time that we come here, dear Lord, you keep us safe getting here and getting home. I thank you, dear God, for your love and your mercy, and your grace, and your long-suffering that you've poured out upon us, dear God. I pray, dear God, that you would just uh, be with me here tonight to be a vessel for you. Get me out of the way. Get my flesh out of the way. Forgive me where I fail you, dear Lord, and forgive me where I sin. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, if you want to put a message, a title to the message, Three Counts of Church Members. Where do we fall in this list? The list that I have tonight to uh, start out with is, are you a natural man? Are you a carnal man? Or are you a spiritual man? And the first to deal with is, are you a natural man? The natural man, reading here in 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says, but, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now, if you're uh, if you're if you're living in the world and you're not at all a child of God, you're not going to know what what God has for you in the spiritual sense. You're going to be too worldly for Him to do anything with until. You either get saved or you become to that realization that God is calling you into uh, his family. You know, a lot of times uh, we're called into his family and, of course, we'll get in church and we'll we'll go to church for a few weeks and then we decide, it's not for me. And at that point, you're a natural man. You're of the world. There's not anything spiritual in you for uh, God to deal with or do anything with until you decide that you need God and God starts calling you and then you listen to God and you come back to him. But until you uh, receive him as your personal savior, you know, you're still a natural man and you're going to live accordingly. And it's a shame that it's so easy to become a child of God that we let the world get in our way. We, uh, we're blinded by the devil, you know, and and as long as we're a natural man, the devil is our father, and and we deal with what he wants us to do. Uh, that's these people out here in the world that don't want anything to do with God. They uh they don't have any clue at all what it is to be a spiritual man. Um, the natural man is uh not where any of us need to be, but there is. There is a group of those people out there that we need to win. That's, that's what our great commission is in life. As we get saved, we need to get out there and win lost souls. These lost souls are the natural man. You know, we, we need to get to them. That's what God wants us to do. That, that becomes our work as we get saved. It's not a work salvation, but it's a works after our salvation. God wants us to win souls for Christ, which is our fruit. Um, if we're not if we're not showing any fruit and God's vine and we're the branches, what does He do? He prunes those branches off. Right. There's no fruit. Right. You know we need to be fruitful, and the natural man is who we need to look for. We need to look for them folks. We need to let them know what Jesus Christ has done in our heart and in our life, and at the same time they can see Jesus living in us as long as we live that way. Are we living a spiritual life or 
for God or are we living a fleshly life for the world? If we come to church and we're only living the spiritual life on Sunday and then all week we're living that worldly, fleshly life, what, what does the natural man have to look forward to? He don't want anything we got if we live that way. Anything. He can't see any change in us. What does he want it for? There's got to be a change. You know, when we, uh, when we get saved and we become a child of God, we're not our own anymore. We've been bought. Amen. We've been bought by a price that was paid on Calvary, a shed blood. That was paid with the life of Jesus. That wasn't just paid with money or, or dues. It was paid with his life he, he gave for us. And we need to remember that in our life. Also, is he cannot please God. If we look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5 through 8. The natural man, he cannot please God. It says in verse 5 of chapter 8. I'll wait just a second for you all to get there. It says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You know, if, if you're living that fleshly, worldly life and you're not living a godly life, you can't please God. You think God's got a smile on his face when you're living that way? And it don't, it don't matter how many times you come to church and sit there in that pew and you praise God and you, you worship him on Sunday and then you go right back out there and live like the world on Monday, Tuesday. Then you come back to church on Wednesday night and you start living the Christian life again on Wednesday. You, you're not going to, that's not going to please God. That's not going to put a smile on his face. Now, do you think God's going to bless you in your life that way? No. You're double-minded. And that's, you're no good for anyone because you're unstable. God can't use a double-minded man. <clears throat> the third thing he has not the Spirit of God. If you look at Jude, in Jude, verse 17 through 19. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the Spirit. You know, how many people do we see in the world today that even though they've heard, and you know most of the people here in America has heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now there's going to be a few out here in these jungles somewhere that may not have, but even as modern as we are today with missionaries and all, there's very few that don't know that there is a supreme being, God. They don't, they know. Now they may not know exactly what Jesus done, but I'm sure as the missionaries have gotten to them, they know that God sent his son, his only begotten son, to die on that old rugged cross for all of us. Now, he died for them people out here in the world. He died for the natural man. But does the natural man accept him as a personal savior? He, he cannot receive the things from God until he accepts Jesus Christ as his personal savior. And that's why it's so important for us as being Christians that we do what God wants us to do, the will of the Father, is to win souls to God. That's what it's for. The natural man is our harvest. We need to look for that each and every day. 
You know, we, that should be the first thing we think of when we get up in the morning is who today can I talk to about Jesus Christ, my Savior. You know, if it, it's prayer. You know, how many times do you pray for them souls out there? How many times did someone pray for you before you come to Jesus Christ? Now it's your part to pray for someone as well as someone prayed for you in your life. You know, my mom and my dad, they, they shed lots of tears praying for me. My wife and my kids has prayed for me. And until I accepted the, the idea that I need to walk that walk with Jesus Christ, not only just say I'm a Christian, you know, being saved in an early life but never walked with Christ, I lived a miserable, sorry life out there. That was not pleasing to God. You know, I might as well have been the natural man. You know, I didn't. I wasn't receiving the things from God either. But that leads me to this second one is the carnal man. Now, see, when I got saved in 1979 at a church group at a, at a creek, we were having a camp, a bunch of teenagers out there. I got saved. Okay. Did I live a Christian life? No, I did not. Okay, so at that point, what was I? I was carnal, you know, and it took me a long time to ever realize that my carnal life was not doing me any good. I, I wasn't getting anywhere. I wasn't growing in Christ. I was still a babe in Christ, still drinking milk, never got on meat. And, and what did that do for me for 33 years to act like that? Nothing. I've wasted a lot of God's time, you know. And look at the long-suffering that he has bestowed upon anyone that has done that. You know, he was very long-suffering with me. I could have been gone a long time ago. He should have knocked me off a long time ago and sent me to hell. That's what I deserved. I really did, you know, for living the way I was living. Um, are you carnal, a carnal man? And here in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12... In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12, says, for when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Now, how many babes do we have in the crowd? You know, a lot of times we're content sitting in that pew going, well, I'm saved, I'm all right, I'm good. So 30 years from now, we're still sitting in that pew and we're good. Amen. We're not growing in Christ. So what, what are we putting into this? What is God putting into us? God knows our heart. And he sees that we're not doing anything for him, then he's he's going to step back and say, "Well, that's your choice. Yeah, you're saved, but are you doing anything for him? What kind of rewards are you going to have when you get to the judgment seat of Christ?" You know, I heard a guy tell me one time, "Well, I'm going to come out of there in a big cloud of smoke." Yeah, but is that what you want to be? Is that where you want to be? I may come out of there, but that ain't what I want. That's not what I need to be. God wants me to be doing things for him. He wants me to be fruitful. Have much fruit. Much fruit. Not just fruit, but much fruit. We have the ability to do that through Jesus Christ. You know, he didn't just die on the cross and say, well, I'm going to save you, and then he's going to just walk off and leave us to go on our own way. That ain't what it is. He walks with us. He's with us each and every day. We're with him. He sits at the right hand of the Father. That's where we are. We just need to realize that God is with us through all of our walk on this earth. We're not alone. 
He's with us. He's in our heart. You know, we just need to do what he wants us to do. You know, how many, how many times can a babe walk a certain way to where they become stronger, then they become a teenager, then they become an adult? And if, if they come in a, become an adult and have their own family, they get married, next thing you know, they're 30, 40 years old. At that time, where are we in our Christian life as a babe? You know, there's no age limit to a babe in Christ. That's one thing that you'll realize there's no age limit. You can be 80 years old and be a babe in Christ. You can be 15 years old and be a babe in Christ. It's your walk with Christ. It matters. It does matter in your Christian life. It matters whether you're a babe or whether you're on strong meat. You know, in a church like this, with the preaching that we get here and the teaching that we get here, there's, <clears throat> there's no reason for any of us here to be a babe on milk. No reason for it. None. None. Our preacher preaches out of the Word of God. That's our food. If you walk out them doors saying you don't get fed, there's something wrong with your salvation. Definitely something wrong with it. You know, <clears throat> I'll be the first one to tell you, I sat in that pew back here, and I sat there, and I sat there, and I listened to the preaching, and I didn't do anything about it. I didn't do what God was convicting me of. But when I did, there was a change made. There's a change in me. There's a lot of you here that might can see that change. There might be some people here that didn't know me back then. But I'm going to tell you, there is a true change in my life. I can say that I have went from this direction to this direction, and I'm, going to, I'm planning on staying in that direction. I don't want to go back to that old life. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to live like that any further. And the more further I get from it, the more I don't want it anymore. You know, that's all you got to do is just you got to stay on that straight and narrow path, staying with your eyes on Jesus, and don't look back. What did Lot's wife do when she looked back? You, you can't do that. You look back, and that's what God doesn't want you to do. If you look back for a glimpse, the devil looks at that, and he goes, Woo, he'll show you something that, man, look at that. Look at that. That was nice. I like that. Next thing you know, you're looking back quite a lot. Then next thing you know, you're not coming to church. And you become carnal-minded. You're double-minded. Now, when you come to church, well, I'm, I'm like Jesus. I want to be just like him. Then when you go out there in the world, you want to be like them. You cannot, you cannot serve both sides of the fence. You've got to be on this side or you've got to be on this side. You, there's no fence straddling with God. You're either for him or you're against him. And to be carnal minded, you're unstable and he can't do anything with you. So if he sent you out to win souls for him, can he trust you? That, that's sad, you know. I mean, to be carnal minded is double minded. He can't trust you to go out there and do something for him. You got to be all sold out to God. 100%. I ain't talking about 99. I ain't talking about 50%. It's got to be a 100% change in your life or he can't do nothing for you. It's, it's sad that people let themselves get in that way. You know, only able to understand simple truth. Yeah, when you're carnal-minded and you're a babe in Christ, simple things you can pick up on. But can you pick up on the things that really count, that really mean a lot? That's the things you need to worry about, you know. As you grow in Christ, Christ gives you something to do. Are you picking up on those things or are you just picking up on the simple things? Like, well, I'm okay. I'm going to heaven. I'll be all right. Everything's good. I can go out there and do this little sin. It's just a little sin. Sin is sin. It don't matter if it's as big as this house or if it's as little as what you can hold between two fingers. I'm saying, what I'm saying is you cannot live a life like that. You can't go out there and sin all week long and come on Sunday and ask God for forgiveness and Him forgive you time and time and time again knowing you're doing the same thing you did all week. And He knows you're going to do it next week because He knows the intent of your heart. He knows what you're going to do. 
He knows what you're going to do a month from now. And if you're living that kind of life, you're carnal. I don't, it don't matter what anybody says. You're a carnal Christian. <clears throat> the third thing, there is an among them envy, strife, and division. And in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 8, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. You know, that's, that's unfruitful. That's being unfruitful. If you're, not, if you're not producing fruit, he clips you off and you go to the fire. Now, I'm not saying he's going to send you to hell, but he's burning what you got. Wood, hay, and stubble. You're not, you ain't got no rewards for that. None whatsoever. And in Romans <clears throat> chapter 8, which we've read, but Romans chapter 8, 6 through 8, says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal man is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's the carnal man. I, you just you can't stress it enough. Why would you want to live a life as a carnal man? Why would you want to continue in the natural man? You know, it's so easy to come to God and ask him to come into your heart and be your personal savior. It's so easy. But people look at that that it's so easy. Oh, no, I got to do something for that. That's just too easy. It's not. God made it that easy for us. And then that brings me to, are you the spiritual man? You know, the spiritual man, he is spiritually minded. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it says, For to be carnally minded is death, but, to be spiritually minded is life. Now, if we're a spiritual man, God has bestowed upon us eternal life. We know we got eternal life. We know we're living as a godly man, not an ungodly man. So what are we doing on God's face as we live that way? We're putting a smile on God's face. That makes him happy when we do that. You know, do we want to make God happy or do we want to make him sad? We want to make God happy in our life. We want the blessings from God. We want him to bestow upon us his glory and his honor and everything that we give him each and every day of our life. We want that blessing in return. We're a spiritual man. We're going to do the things that are spiritual. If we look at... Uh, <clears throat> If we look at chapter 8, 9 through 13, it says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive, your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. You know, that's, that's being spiritual, being filled with the Spirit. Um, 14 through 17 of the same chapter. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I mean, glory to God right there. I'm going to tell you, that's a lot said right there. 
You know, if you're walking in the Spirit and, and you have, you're being led by the Spirit of God, you are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's our personal relationship with God. My Lord, we got we to gotta remember that in life. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, you think you love your children? God really loves His children. And when we're living a spiritually filled, spiritually minded life for Him, He loves us to no end. He has a smile on His face. Thou good and faithful servant. I mean, He's looking at all those things and blessing our life for it. We need to remember that in life. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. That's being one with him. Can't beat that. I mean, good night. That's the best thing on earth right there. There ain't nothing any better than that right there to know that you can be spiritually bonded with him. All you have to do is accept him and do what he wants you to do and live a spiritually filled, spiritually minded life. He, don't be carnal. There's so many people that are carnal anymore. That, you know, I, I just can't, I can't hit on that enough that we see people in church all the time. They're here for a while and then they're gone. They're here for a while and then they're gone. And they're here for a while and then they're gone. That just goes on and on and on. And, and that's carnal, being carnal. The second thing in a spiritual man, he walks after the Spirit. Romans 8, 2, and, two and four, through 4. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh... God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Got to walk after the spirit. We got to be filled with the spirit of God. God loves us to no end. The third thing, he rejoices and gives thanks. Philippians chapter 4. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Don't let the devil steal your joy. You know, a lot of times people let that happen and then they go around with a pooch mouth like pastor calls it, the pooch mouth, thumb sucker. I mean, come on, let your joy shine. Do, do you think anybody out there in the, in, in the natural man's realm or the carnal man sees us walking around with a pooch mouth, a sad face, you think they want what we got? I mean, if I seen a person like that and a Christian like that, I'd say, you know what? I know he goes to that church over there and he is there and they all they call that church the church with a heart and all that. that that's, not, that's not the way we're supposed to live. Amen. We're supposed to live with a smile on our face and joy in our heart. We're supposed to be bouncing around telling people about Jesus. And when people see that in us, they go, man, I need to find out what church he goes to. I need to find out what's going on, what's in his life, because I want some of that. You know, how many people out here living in this old world right now already have a sad story? Why do we got to have one? We, we got the best end of all. Look at the end of the book. Read the Bible. Look at the end. We win. We're winners. What do, what do winners do when they win in football games? They shout and praise and hate. Woo, I got it. Why don't Christians act like that? We got it. We're, we're there. Nothing can pluck us out of his hand. Amen. Nothing. We're there. 
we, we, we're on the winning side. Read the last of the book. It tells you. The end, of the, the end chapter of the book tells you. We don't want. All we got to do is ask him to come into our heart. If we're not saved, you don't know anything about what I'm talking about, but you can. You can come right up here and get saved just like anybody else sitting in here that's saved. He, he's just and wants to forgive and wants to uh, bring you into the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. Ask him for you to be your personal savior. That's, that's, why we, that's why we live as a spiritual man. You know, in verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So how can we live a spiritual life if we're not letting Christ strengthen us into it? You know, then we become carnal-minded again. If we're not letting God in our life and we're not showing God as our Lord and Savior and Master of our life and sold out to Him, having joy in our heart, then we're, we might as well be carnal-minded because nobody wants to hear anything you got to say. You got to have joy in your heart. You got to come. Up, you got to. You, you got to praise Him for everything He done. You got to have joy in your heart. I hope and pray you all follow after the spiritual man and do the things of the Spirit of God, because that's that's where we all need to be. We need to be spiritually like God, in in our life of all. You know, there's many many things that you can say. What what category do you fall in at this time? You know, you've heard the three things. What category do you fall in? You know, growing in Christ and become a go-getter. Seek souls. Pray always. Read the word of God. Every day become someone God can use to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where we need to be. You know, when, when, when I rededicated my life, that's what I want to do. I, I sold out to him at that point. That change came about. And as that change came about, I want to be different than I was before. I want to always be ever so mindful for what he's done for me on Calvary. And I want to go out there and tell someone about it because I'm happy what he's done in my life. I'm really happy. And I like to tell people about Jesus. You know, yeah, I have some that shun me. But they don't realize there's a heaven to win and there's a hell to shun. And when you're, when you're a Christian and you're living a spiritual man you ain't got to worry about hell you ain't got to worry about that no more you've done received the things of Jesus Christ and God saves us from that but that natural man he better be worrying about how hot it is he sure does and you know these these people out here that get to laughing at you about praying at dinner time and supper time and reading your bible on the job and telling somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ on the job and they get to shunning you and laughing at you and telling people, hey, hey look at him, he's one of them old Bible thumpers and all this other. Hey, I'm telling you, hell's going to be real hot on them. They need to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Because if you're with that crowd, you're with that crowd. You're in that body. When you're in the body of Christ, you're in his body. And all members in his body is needed for the body of Christ. This church is the bride of Christ. We need to always be remembering that one day is going to be that great wedding day. He's coming to get his bride. And he is coming. I don't think it's going to be that long. I think he's coming very soon. You know, out of the 2,000 some odd years that he's been gone, he's been preparing a place for us. And I thank God for that, you know. I thank God for, for sending his son. Can you imagine today having to go and get a bullock or a lamb or something to take down here and sacrifice and then letting the priest go in and talk for you and all? Can you imagine all that? I mean, you read the Old Testament where they done all that. that wow. To have to do that? To get to the holy of holies? What? And then Jesus died on the cross and it rent so we can go straight to God through him? Amen. Hey, we got an open door. Amen. Open invitation. 
All we got to do is act upon it, use it. That's our choice in life is to say, hey, I'm either going to serve him or I'm not going to serve him because that's the only two ways there is to go. There's either serving him or not serving him. And we need to serve him. If if you want blessings in life from God, you need to serve him, no doubt. If If you are one of the other natural man, carnal man, I hope you will come to the altar and ask God to change you to the spiritual man. And I mean, you examine your life. Examine your life all week. And you think about what I'm saying here tonight. Which one are you? Get it right with God. Get on that altar. You know, you can, you can become the spiritual man if you're a natural man here tonight if you just come down here and ask God to come into your heart. Jesus is there for you. This altar is open all the time. It's an open invitation right straight to him through Jesus Christ. That blood was shed on Calvary for you too. And the carnal man, if you need to get right with God, the time is now. That's, that's, what, it, that's what it's all, all about, is get right. Be the spiritual man. You know, as we're the spiritual men and the spiritual people of this church, we, we're all going to be one accord. We're all going to be one, love one another, be part of one another. We're going to be the body of Christ. And you want revival? That's where it comes from. That's right. Revival. And uh, God loves you and will help you change. It's your choice. That's all it has to be is your choice. He loves you. He'll do it. You know, die to flesh, live for the spirit of God. If you're saved, you know, you should see a change in your life. It's like Dominic said one time when he preached a cowbell service. Is there enough evidence to convict you of being a child of God? Is there? When you look in the mirror, is there enough evidence? Because if you die to that old rascal looking back at you, you ain't got to worry about it. You can live for God and be the spiritual man. All right, that's all God give me. Amen.